Kind of int we're going to check the intonation first and foremost before I do anything on this guitar. All of this will be done Stop. on the new XLT unit. Well, a big part of the issue on this guitar is the neck needs to be reset. And it definitely is going to need a fret dress at that neck junction. Well, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get in there and peel that label off and expose those bolts that are holding the neck in place. Well, I've started by flipping that guitar up on its edge and orienting the guitar so that I can reach inside the sound hole with some heat from a hair dryer and loosen up that label. Just use a ratchet with an extension. So we'll just get that started. Yeah, that's the bottom one. Okay, now we're getting the top one. Loosen that off. Good. Now they'll just come up by hand. Of course, uh, Robert Godin was really at the leading edge of this whole mechanical neck joint. And of course, Martin have jumped on that bandwagon with the bolt-on neck as well. And uh, there's all kinds of very reputable builders now using that style. But. Okay, so now we can set up to slip that fingerboard extension joint now that those bolts are out. Okay, we've got our 250 watt light bulb about five and a half, six inches above the fingerboard extension. It's, I've set my iPhone timer for seven minutes, so we're going to heat that up. So this is actually old, very old, ironing board cover. I cut it up into convenient shapes years ago. Uh, to act as an adjustable heat shield to protect the rest of the guitar that shouldn't be heated up while we heat up that fingerboard extension right down to the glue line. So I've heated up this probe on the buffer. Looks like it's getting us somewhere. So the idea, of course, is to get it off right on the glue line. With a, we'll slip a piece of bristle board under there to sort of hold our place for us. And we'll come around the other side. I've got my probe here. And I think we've heated that up sufficiently. Let's see. The neck is strapped down. The body is strapped down. Okay, we are just about there. And as far as the fingerboard glue joint, I think we're good. In order to make this guitar playable, there were several restructuring, re-engineering issues that we needed to address. The bridge saddle was bottomed right out, the action was still way too high, and essentially what that means, the neck had to be reset back like that slightly. Now on this particular guitar, with this sort of bolt-on configuration, uh, it complicated matters. Where the neck connects to the body, there's a high spot and then it drops off. So in order to straighten that out, I removed the fingerboard and then block sanded the intersection of the neck to body junction and actually even skimmed a little bit of material off the underside of that fingerboard and then glued it into place. We will still do a very light fret dress at the neck junction, but you'll so now that the neck to body angle has been changed, we're going to have a little bit of real estate at that saddle on the bridge and we'll be able to place this action anywhere we want it. Then we can carry on with the compensated nut and the compensated saddle. Oh, and incidentally, this entire job was done on the XLT unit. A couple of things that were a bit of a surprise for me, uh, when I was gluing this fingerboard on, the pivoting neck block on the XLT, there's enough space under there for me to clip those spring clamps on either side. This clamp held it down right at that intersection of the neck to the body. This is going to totally put us in the driver's seat. This guitar will play smooth as butter and perfectly in tune when we're done. So now that we've changed that neck angle ever so slightly and we slide that straight edge to the bridge, 
you can see there's actually a space here. Now normally, as you've heard me say in other videos, that you want that sort of straight edge to just kiss the tip of the bridge, but this bridge has been thinned down because the next set was never right to begin with. So the fact that there's a little bit of a space there, that's all right, that's a good thing. You'll see when we do the saddle that you, we're gonna have enough height on there that it will easily clear the frets and give us complete control over how we set the action up. Because all the discrepancies are right at that neck junction, I can get away with doing this on the XLT because you don't have all the typical flexing to deal with. And I can see I've, I have hit the high spots and of course it's the 14th fret right at the body that's getting the biggest head. So far I've done this entire job on this new XLT model. Very happy with the results. So we'll just recrown that base side primarily. Now it does feel like we need a little bit of an edge dress here as well. So we'll get, get that while we're at it while everything's masked off. Good. We'll use that 400 grit to take out the file marks and place those crowns back in the center. So we're going to throw some strings on and get started. One of the biggest challenges for any type of cutaway guitar is how do you restore that structural integrity after taking that big bite out of the cutaway. This, I've seen this happen so many times and this is one of the biggest problems with this guitar is it was folding up and there was a lot more distortion, noticeably more distortion, on the cutaway side. This side was fine. We had all that extra structure resisting that sort of folding up motion of the string tension. So I did put an extra brace in, you can kind of see it here, that went from the head brace to the X brace. And I actually doubled up that head brace because this whole area was just caving in and it was disrupting the stability of the tuning and everything else. Anyway, that's taken care of now. So that was one of the restructuring jobs other than changing that neck angle as you saw earlier in the video. And then I took material off the underside of that fingerboard extension as well as leveling out with a small sanding block I leveled out that junction where the neck meets the body to get a perfect trajectory of the fingerboard. This thing plays beautifully now. I'm going to plug it in in the house, you get to hear it. Okay, we'll go through the rest of the wrap up on this. This is our compensated nut. You can, you can see that the low E string is actually a negative value. The rest of them are all positive values. I did go with a regular 12 to 53 set. Ben and I talked about going to a bluegrass string because of the structural issues with that sound hole kind of collapsing. I decided to go with a lighter string. This is our new compensated and radius saddle to match that fingerboard radius. So the other thing I did besides, you know, putting a fresh battery in there was I put this additional strap button. I do this on my own guitars and I've done it for countless customers. So that this input jack for the system never serves as a strap button. This serves as your strap button and it actually acts as a strain relief where you can bring the cord up and over, feed it through your strap and then plug it in. This way, this will never loosen up. And anyone who has one of these things knows that they loosen up once every couple of weeks. And I've seen people crazy glue them on, but that's not the solution. Just put another strap button on, that takes care of it.
So these high density foam stop blocks can be set up wherever you need it. If you had a flying V you could put one in the center. It acts as a gentle positive stop for the guitar body. Okay, so let's go string to string with our proverbial tuning test. So here's our E, low E. A, M first fret. T, M first fret. G, M first fret. M first fret. And high E. And now we'll go string to string from the seventh fret to the corresponding octave. So sixth string, the note B on the seventh fret, and octave. A string seventh fret, the note E, and octave. D string, the note A, and octave. G string seventh fret, and octave. B string, and now the first string, seventh fret, and now for the real test, we'll play some chords. So here's G first position. First position, fourth position, eighth position, and twelfth position. Here's your garden variety D chord. First position, fifth position, tenth position, fourteenth position. It's kind of a B minor thing that I've been kind of working on with my buddy in practice. So I've looped that uh, B minor thing and we'll just kind of let that play. Mm -hmm. 